After seeing the abundance of reviews pop up for the CETA S recently, I thought, well, clearly there would not be one waiting for me, but I should go check just in case for peace of mind. And sure enough, Evike has sent one my way as well, so let's talk about this update to the CETA. To get this out of the way right off the bat, as I said in the intro, this was sent to me. This was not something I paid for. I didn't even know it was coming, to be honest. Uh, so if that is an issue for you, feel free to disregard anything I say in this video. That is totally up to you. But I'm going to talk about it regardless because uh, this was an unexpected surprise. So there were a few things that I liked and plenty of things that I wasn't necessarily a big fan of for the original CETA. Uh, the whole kind of takedown method of a easy access to the plunger tube and spring and breach and all that was a cool idea. Uh, but the performance was flawed in the original one. Now this has the Alpha RT kit in it, which increases the power, has a better uh, breech and barrel and all of that good stuff. So that is a definite plus and step in the right direction for this blaster. It also comes with their ZRO, not a SCAR, it's like a rifled barrel thing, uh, which improves performance. You can watch a Bradley Phillips video on that if you want to go more in detail in terms of how it affects performance with that barrel versus without. Uh, they also added some extra things on it that you wouldn't get in the normal, such as this uh, buttstock and red dot sight, which the buttstock, honestly, super nice. Probably going to take this off of the CETA and put it on my actual airsoft primary because it's a very nice stock. Uh, the whole rubber back padding feels nice. It feels solid. It feels secure. But this is not going to come in your standard package of the CETA S. So that is important. Neither is this optic. Those are both extra things which you may or may not want to purchase. Uh, what is nice, this does show that the buffer tube will take an airsoft stock. So in case you have any questions on that, it will do that. Uh, also, the plastic seems to be somewhat dif different at the very least. It is less creaky. It feels a little bit better. Um, if I have my other CETA over here, you can, I don't know if you can hear that difference, but it's, it does not feel as stable or secure, which the update does. So that is another point in its favor. Now, I had been waiting to really do anything with my CETA until the Omega kit came out, which I, assu I assumed it was going to come out. I don't know if it actually is or not, uh, but I love the Omega kit for my long shot and wanted one for the CETA to kind of give it that boost in performance and reliability. Uh, but the Alpha RT seems like a nice stepping stone. In the footage you're looking at right now, you can see on the left, the original CETA with the Omni kit versus the CETA S on the right with the Alpha RT kit. And uh, there's a very clear and distinct difference. These are the same darts that came with the CETA S out of uh, Katana mags on both sides. And the performance is day and night. You can see plenty of the shots not even leaving the grass, which is about 15 feet maybe from where I'm shooting max. So, uh, yeah, the CETA original Omni Breach had problems. The Alpha RT kit inside the CETA S seems to be forming much, much better, which I am very pleased about. I am curious to put a heavier spring in this and see how it performs then, how it holds up, what I can do with it. Uh, we'll find out later on if that's the case. I don't know how efficient this system is and what could potentially be tinkered with and improved in terms of uh, what you get for the amount of powers in the spring, but that's not really my area of expertise. I'm more of the on the field experience and that kind of stuff where this so far as it is feels like something I would bring to test uh, for a more competitive game. And in fact, I, I will probably do that for some of our uh, local leagues games coming up in the near future. Uh, I don't really use optics. 
uh, for for our hobby. So this optic to me, I can't say one way or the other. Whether that's a worthwhile investment, that's up to you. Um, things I still just I, I you've heard about this whole video. I hate the rattle on the Sita. The key rings in these drive me crazy. Stop it. Find something else. Like, I don't need key rings on here. I, I'm, I'm probably just gonna pull them off and just use like a screwdriver to push the thing through when I need to. Uh, because this, during a game, is obnoxious. I hate it. Hate it. But that's really, honestly, more of a minor complaint that you can solve on your own. Uh, some things that I would recommend as well, this pump grip, you really have to have at least one finger up on the front of it to get good grip and good traction on it. What I would highly recommend is anyone that's buying a Sita, go order one of these grips from Foam Technician. This grip is my favorite grip possibly of any pump grip that I've used. It's just, it's just so comfortable and so satisfying. Like this extra lip for your finger and the back of your pinky right here, it just, it feels really nice. And honestly, it's one of the things that made me want something to be successful with the Sita so I could use it. So definitely, uh, if you're picking up a Sita, go check out Foam Technician for that. Um, in terms of FPS numbers, my chronograph is currently charging. So hopefully by the time this is out, I'll have some like FPS numbers here. Um, I don't think it's hitting crazy hard, but my hope is that it's hitting consistent. From the sh test shots I did, it seemed to be relatively consistent. Uh, especially in terms of groupings, I was fairly surprised. I, I honestly, though to be fair, Granted the Sita's history, I was not expecting much here. So that surprise was welcomed. I was quite happy with it. Now, how it'll perform on the field itself once I get it out there is yet to be seen. But this is a really good step in the right direction. And I'm honestly hoping they do release an Omega kit and do continue to improve this blaster because the concept is, is novel, it's neat, it's fun and I would like to see more of it succeed and be better. So fingers crossed on that one. I think I'm going to be opening this up and I think replacing the black with the white because I just like the blue and white better. Obviously it matches my color scheme a bit more, but also just kind of try to minimize the black in public uh, just, just because you never know. Um, but yeah, this is just something I am pleasantly surprised by. I, I think is, is the best way to put this whole kind of first impressions, which is a good thing. I like being pleasantly surprised. So thanks again to Evike for sending this my way. If you want to check it out, I'll have a listing down below uh, directly to their website. Important again to know that I believe they do have a package that includes the optic and the stock. Uh, the regular blaster itself does not include them. Just again, want to be clear about that. Uh, really like this stock though. So if it's a worthwhile upgrade for you, I will say it does add a nice feel to it, though it is a little bit heavy and adds some weight to it. Uh, one more time, since this was sent to me for free, if that's an issue, you know what to do. Uh, that said, let me know your thoughts on the Cita S. For the price point of not on sale, around $80 to $90, I believe, how does that compare to some of the other options for you? The Dart Zone Mark 1.1, a Talon Claw, a Prophecy, like where does this now stand for you with the updates and changes at the newer price? I am very curious about that and that's kind of one of the more interesting aspects of this to me. So definitely, definitely let me know down below your thoughts on this. And if you're new to the channel and you enjoyed this video, feel free to subscribe for more in the future. And as always, thank you so much. I'll see you next time.